Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Brian Henderson, and uh, I am Vice Chairman for Maryland, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And as a uh, member of the Board of the Foreign Policy Association, it gives me great pleasure to begin to uh, make the introduction, rather, for the, minister, the Prime Minister of Turkey. It's a great honor indeed. And as has already been said before, we welcome uh, the, a very prestigious delegation for which the Foreign Policy Association is very honored to have with us here today. Bir kez abst her zamat dost. If I said that correctly, <laughs> it is an old Turkish saying translated as once a friend, always a friend. And we welcome you here, Mr. Prime Minister, because indeed the United States and Turkey have always been great friends, and I know and trust that you will agree that we'll be friends for, for a very, very long time. As has been stated before by uh, Mr. Poli of ENI, Turkey has embarked upon some very strange and unique efforts to transform the country. And we here in the U.S. appreciate the fact that Turkey has been a long-standing ally a long-standing member of NATO, and a steadfast supporter in the uh, War on Terror. But as most Americans here today will also not fully appreciate, under your leadership, Turkey has embarked upon some rather unique efforts at extending the, uh, the hand of friendship to traditional, shall we say, um, not so much enemies, but shall we say uh, uh, adversaries, particularly in the context of uh, Greece. And with that effort that you have undertaken personally, there has been tremendous effort at improving the relationship with Cyprus and moving further into making sure that there is an open dialogue not only with Israel, but also in improving relations with Armenia. But more importantly, it's been under your leadership that there has been a shepherding of the Turkish people into the entirely new effort of becoming a full-fledged member of the European Union. This effort actually started with the Prime Minister personally because in a four-month period he had made many trips throughout uh, the European Union advocating the effort of Turkey becoming a full-fledged member. Mr. Prime Minister, this evening you have here tonight an audience that is represented primarily by people who are in the financial industry, economists and bankers. And it is indeed the economic situation of Turkey that has brought a, such a tremendous uh, outpouring of interest as well as support. It is not fully appreciated that actually the economic dynamic of Turkey today is really, in a sense, the story, or it supersedes the story of Europe itself. Growth rates today in Turkey are three times that of the average for the EU. In the first six months of this year, M&A activity in Turkey has exceeded over $8 billion. In this effort at becoming more of a conversion story within the EU context, there has been tremendous progress in uh, regulatory and supervisory improvement in the banking and financial sector within Turkey itself, and not least a very strong effort at improving public finances and especially in managing the country's debt. Today, Turkey has a 60% debt to GDP ratio versus 90% that it had in 2001. This compares to Italy, which is at 125% of GDP. 
We have also the fact that the public sector borrowing requirement under the EU Maastricht criteria, Turkey is below that of Germany, and Germany's ratio is 3.9%. With growth today exceeding 6%, and most economists will agree that it will continue at least at this level for the next three to five years, there is increasing interest, not only from the standpoint of foreign investors, but also of Turkish investors to continue to invest in the country. The current market cap of Turkey is approximately $100 billion. The level of growth in the various sectors from banking to energy, as was outlined by Mr. Poli earlier, is something without precedent within a European con uh, context. But more importantly, this would not have been able to happen without a commitment by your government and by the strong economic team headed by Minister Babajan to reducing inflation, where today Inflation is at approximately 8% when in 1997 it was over 100%. And it's interesting this to, to reflect upon the primary surplus that has been uh, compared to other emerging markets. But Turkey is three times that of Argentina and one and a half times that of Brazil for the past five years. So management of the debt has been something which has been remarkable, and I'm sure there are many colleagues of ours here in this room tonight who will agree that the level of uh, receptivity for Turkish paper, be it the sovereign or financial institutions who have recently come to the market, is quite strong. Nevertheless, there are still some challenges that we have to face in Turkey. First of all, to improve productivity. And this will be done, and I'm sure the Prime Minister will speak about this, in the process of continuing the strategy of privatization. Today, the productivity level is only 35 percent of the OECD average. Secondly, there needs to be continued, continued improvement in the banking sector and reform in the capital markets of Turkey itself. Today, as some of you may know, there are over 150 different brokerage houses in, in Istanbul alone. And obviously, there are many social reforms that need to be undertaken. But with a country that is second in population to that of Germany, it really comes down to the fact that Turkey is indeed the growth story of Europe itself. By way of background, our guest this evening, uh, Prime Minister Erdogan, is actually, by training, an economist. He was educated at Marmara University, and he's a man, really, of many talents. In fact, I understand that he was a professional football player for over 16 years, playing the position of a center forward. And it shows that, indeed, his selection of his team, his economic team in particular, is one that reflects well upon his uh, commitment to team play. In his political career, he made a mark as mayor of the city of Istanbul. He, he proved himself as a populist, an effective administrator, and in particular, improving Istanbul's infrastructure and transportation grid. He then went on to lead the new Justice and, Devel and Development Party, the AKP, and on the back of widespread discontent with the traditional party's handling of the economy following the 1999 earthquake, took 34.3 percent of the vote in the November 3, 2002 parliamentary elections. Prime Minister Erdogan was named Prime Minister of Turkey on March 14, 2003. So ladies and gentlemen, before I uh, ask the Prime Minister to please come forward. Let me also state that at the end of the Prime Minister's remarks, he's agreed to 15, and no more, 15 minutes for questions. I will be the, uh, the decider of those questions, uh, or at least I will be uh, moderating that effort. And uh, so with that, Mr. Prime Minister, please uh, welcome, and let's uh, give him a very warm welcome. Thank you, Thank you.
dostlar? My dear friends. First of all, I would like to say that I'm very happy to be here at this dinner and I greet you all on behalf of myself and my delegation. I am very happy to have this opportunity to address the Foreign Policy Association at this dinner since the Foreign Policy Association is a very important institution which has contributed greatly to uh, the world uh, policies developed by the United States and I thank you very much for your kind invitation. This evening I would like to share with you uh, the foreign policy approach of Turkey and I will also share with you in general my views with regard to Turkish-American relations and I will also talk about the economic situation in Turkey. Distinguished guests, Turkey is located at a very important region in the world and according to some it, might, it is considered to be a country of a medium scale power. From the point of view of historical and cultural accumulation, geopolitical position and human resources, Turkey in fact has an even more greater role and importance than any regional power. And Turkey is uh, more effectively making use of this potential. And Turkey is able to go through this process despite the uncertainties, threats and difficulties that have emerged in the international system and uh, the difficulties that are encountered as a result of globalization. We are involved in a difficult regional area and uh, there are also many issues in the international environment. Uh, however, we believe that it is important to take into consideration the foreign policy traditions of Turkey and marry them with the realities of the present day in order to effectively render a foreign policy. And of course it is not uh, only up to us to um, carry on with this kind of foreign policy vision by ourselves only. Therefore, when we put this vision into practice, we also get the support of various partnerships that we have through the multidimensional relations we have had in the international arena and this includes the transatlantic alliance where the US plays a central role. Therefore the basic principles of Turkish foreign policy take into consideration these associations as well as the values of the 21st century. We are moving in line with the demands and interests of our people as well as the expectations of the international community. In other words, we try to be as realistic as possible and we aim to contribute to the implementation of universal values over a greater geography. Turkey has adopted a policy where she is able to make use of both of these orientations without any uh, contradiction and is therefore engaged in a multi-dimensional active po uh, foreign policy. Within a democratic and pluralistic system, our people are also able to help shape our foreign policy. All of these developments in, point out to the increasing importance and effect of democratization in world politics. Societies that grow more democratic can more easily deal with globalization and they can have a more effective foreign policy and we know all this first and foremost from our own experiences and we aim to get countries in our region to adopt a similar approach. In today's world, values, ideas, norms and identities are gaining greater importance. Therefore, in, in this setting, foreign policy is not simply a mechanical balance of power. We have a multicultural uh, background and we, through this background, we try to understand other peoples and their demands and 
needs. And in that sense, we believe that pursuing a transparent foreign policy is not a weakness but a strength. In addition, regional cooperation, according to us, is a confidence-building dynamic and it contributes to interdependence and mutual understanding. Therefore, we have adopted a win-win approach in our foreign policy and we believe and we see that such an approach is making a real contribution to the strengthening of a culture of conciliation in our region. The first example of this foreign policy uh, approach was implemented in Cyprus. And today, after the uh, referendum, well, before the referendum on April 24th, um, in the meetings in Bergenstock and in other meetings that took place before the referendum in Cyprus, if Turkey and the uh, Turkish Cypriots uh, were understood well by uh, the international committee, it was because of this approach of win-win. The positive developments in Turkey's relations with our neighbors in recent years is another indication that this policy is paying off. And I mean here all of our neighbors, neighbors to the east, to the west, to the north and to the south. We are developing our relations with all of our neighboring countries and those relations or activities are geared towards making friends and not making enemies. Therefore, from a military, political, economic, commercial, cultural point of view, we have developed relations with all of our neighbors. These were relations that didn't exist in the past. This includes Greece, Jordan, Lebanon, Romania, Bulgaria, Iran, Iraq, the Caucasus, the Turkish Republics, Russia, all of them. And in the future, we will continue to uh, develop our neighborly relations. I also would like to underline another point. In addition to Turkey's own characteristics, Turkey has also tried to, has been trying to carry on with this process of integration with the West based on a mutual understanding and respect for to each other. And in this process too, the U.S. has a very important role because the United States will continue to be the most effective global force in the foreseeable future. And the partnership that Turkey has established with the U.S. around universal values and uh, mutual interest is very important. This partnership is serving not only the interests of both parties, but it is also an important activity which brings together the two countries in a very positive way for encouraging further positive developments in our region. We have more than 50 years of a relationship with the United States. We've been allies for 50 years. And I do believe that there is a very strong strategic basis for this relationship, which can overcome any difficulties which may emerge at any given time in history. And I know without a doubt that both parties aim to grow this strategic base between our two countries. I also know that the strategic outlook for Turkey adopted by the U.S. also takes into consideration the uh, potential that Turkey's membership to the EU will bring the, to the EU and uh, the US evaluation there is even more pragmatic and uh, encompassing than some Europeans. In Turkey recently we have been also engaged in a very active reform process and our government has been especially engaged in this activity. The objective here is to provide for the highest standards of living for the Turkish people in our republic and to uh, increase democracies for our people. Of course the EU process helps facilitate this development but Turkey 
will continue with her positive transformation independent of the relations with the EU and despite any difficulties that the EU may suffer in itself. And so in this sense, Turkey will continue to be a very beneficial example to developing other developing countries. The uh, strategic approach of the United States is very important with regard to Turkey's EU membership and uh, that approach does not take into consideration the wrongful analysis which say that Turkey's EU membership will negatively influence Turkish-US relations. In fact, Turkey and the US know each other better than most would realize that um, close cooperation began after World War II when our soldiers worked together or fought together against communism and we've also displayed important solidarity in the Cold War and today we have a common shared vision for a more secure and better world. Within the framework of the common interests of the West, Turkey continues to engage in cooperation in the traditional uh, cooperative framework in the transatlantic community and uh, is also extending this cooperation to a broader geography and in this for this purpose Turkey is making use of her comparative advantages distinguished guests the uh, position of the United States in the global scene and its power is one of the most important determining factors in international relations this is in fact an important opportunity for the world a global power or the uh, only superpower or being the only superpower today of course comes with some challenges and responsibilities as you know very well as the global influence of the country increases of your country increases there is also expectations for further accountability and I am sure that you are discussing how the US has to move forward in various platforms such as the foreign policy forum and the activities that the FDA organizes. What I can say in, at, on this point is the following. The United States must continue to be interested with things happening in the world. We also see that in, your, in this country, the global processes are also evaluated and, anal and analyzed in the most comprehensive way in, in, in uh, scientific organizations. And all of this research has shown that on issues such as terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, economic and demographic imbalances and environmental uh, problems, uh, these issues are all very important on the international platform and they have, are all very serious and it is necessary to have the leadership of a country like the United States in trying to overcome these very important problems that ail our world today and in that sense the effort that the United States has been displaying uh, to resolve these issues through effective multilateralism is indeed very important and this will help resolve uh, the problems of the world and it will also help others understand the United States better it is in fact has been somewhat unfortunate that a problem such as Iraq which is multidimensional and difficult has come about to the agenda at this time but we also see that uh, the uh, transatlantic alliance is still very important despite the difficulties and Today, Turkey has been uh, providing a lot of support for the preservation and establishment of regional and international peace in a very wide geography from the Gulf to Afghanistan and to a limited extent in Iraq under different uh, hats, including NATO. We also place a lot of importance on NATO becoming a uh, security organization and a cooperative platform where the political dimension is also strong. So NATO should not only be a collective defense uh, organization. 
the method with regard to dealing with Iraq uh, has had its difficulties and the U.S. could not uh, achieve a full consensus with all its allies. Turkey, too, with, in light of her own experiences and democratic decision-making processes, provided support to the United States in the way it deemed possible. And our collaboration and cooperation, which is based on our common understanding, continues to be the case. Today, we are providing support uh, to improve the situation in Iraq, and Turkey is the country that provides the uh, most aid to uh, this country. And we continue to do our, uh, what we can to ensure political unity of Iraq. Any failure in Iraq will be a serious problem for the region, the people in the region and the international community. Therefore, we have to look towards the future and we have to increase our coordination and cooperation. In the efforts with regard to Iraq, all the logistical support to Iraq is going from Turkey, and this is a, an important effort that cannot be neglected. For the democratic process to move forward, there are certain other things that are being done, and Turkey is providing support to this process of democratization in Iraq. We have promised to support the formation of political um, parties and institutions and help train them in Iraq, uh, help train the political parties in uh, Iraq. And we've always told the Iraqis that we'd be ready to uh, train the military and the police. And the Iraqi Prime Minister, Mr. Jafiri, visited our country as the first country he visited as Prime Minister. He came with six ministers, and in that meeting, I told them that we as Turkey are ready to provide any support we can because our objective is to see Iraq among the democratic countries in the world. Another area where our uh, objectives overlap with that of the U.S is the reform and democratization agenda in the neighboring geography of Turkey. As Turkey, we are, have taken a role in the efforts for a broader uh, Middle East and North Africa initiative, and we joined the process as a democratic partner. And as a result of our responsibility in this project, we have been developing our relations with the Middle East, Middle Eastern countries and North African countries. Myself and my foreign minister are working on uh, developing those ties and all uh, the ministers are working in this respect. Our objective is to help establish democracy, fight against terrorism, security, freedoms, human rights, rule of law in these countries. These are and the values and that we would like to see and this is where we're looking for solidarity. We are working to help remove oppressive regimes in this way. Of course, we, in our work we meet and talk to the administrations and if we can achieve this transformation in these countries, I think we will all be very happy that such developments take place. These are things that can happen through dialogue, through uh, communication with those countries. And I think we all have to work together in this respect to speed up the process. At the moment, in this effort for the broader Middle East and North Africa, Turkey, Italy and Yemen are working together as co-chair of the process. And uh, we are very hopeful for this process and we continue to work uh, with um, in order to achieve the results. And we see the efforts which have been initiated by the U.S. for positive change as an important opportunity. Distinguished guests, the path Turkey has chosen for herself domestically and, and in foreign policy 
will help establish a suitable regional environment for positive change. And we will continue to support international efforts in this respect. And as the co-chair of the Democracy Assistant Dialogue, which was formed under the G8, we will be carrying out our first activity about the role of women in society and the first meeting of this effort will be held in Istanbul next month with the participation of non-governmental organizations. And we will continue to uh, work in this area in the future. On the other hand, we know that reform is not an easy process and there are s some conflicts which are ongoing in the region and they do not provide for an ideal environment for reform. But we see that reform is an important need for the region and every country can start to implement reform gradually based on their own context. We also understand that some circles may have some reservations with regard to recommendations about reform and democratization coming from outside, from abroad. But we are also trying to encourage the regional countries to pay attention to this initiative and also try to work, we also try to work to focus international attention on the needs of the region. So our foreign policy, which I've tried to summarize to you, has been uh, geared for the purpose of producing more safety, security and stability in the region. And we aim uh, to motivate positive change. We are a country that, is, that knows the East within the community of Western nations and the West within the community of Eastern nations. Therefore, we have this, upper, this uh, special advantage and we make use of this. The, in order to get both sides to understand each other, we have to keep working because this is an important, it, this would be an important achievement and we will, we will continue to play a constructive role in this process. Of course, the strategic targets which have been put forth by the United States in order to strengthen global peace and freedoms and in order to prevent the dangers that have emerged also overlap with our own objectives and this is a result of the common values that we share. Turkey has some competitive advantage in, advantages in her region and Turkey is moving along the same lines with the United States with regard to the general objectives in her own region. One of the newest and most concrete results of this um, policy has been the developments with regard to the opening up of the Bakü Tbilisi Ceyhan pipeline. The common strategic outlook by Turkey and the U.S. has uh, resulted in a strategic um, project and as a result it has been possible to diversify the uh, methods of transport and routes of transport for energy resources in the Caucasus and this is very important for increasing the safety of energy supply and so Turkey has become an important energy corridor in all directions from east west to north south Bakü Tbilisi Ceyhan will also be joined by the Kazakhstan Aktao pipeline so it will be the Aktao Bakü Tbilisi Ceyhan pipeline and it will be even more important. In the same way, Samsung Ankara and Samsung Ankara extended to Jehan. Though that will be another um, pipeline that will be developed as an oil and natural gas pipeline. On the 3rd of July, we will be connecting a natural gas pipeline between Turkey and Greece. If we had discussed these a short, even a short while ago, it, people would have thought it would be unthinkable. But today we are, we will be providing natural gas through Turkey to Greece and these are all very important in serving for peace in general. So therefore, these are all very important steps and we will continue to carry on with these efforts and strengthen this process. I also visited Israel and Palestine last month and 
Although there are many difficulties, I believe that we are moving towards the objective of peace. And as Turkey, we ask that everybody who can make a contribution to this peace process should make that contribution because we have to succeed in the Middle East. If we do not collectively contribute to global peace, then we cannot achieve the, uh, the targets we have set for ourselves. Terrorism is terrorism, and no, uh, there is no religion, race, uh, or nationality to the terrorists. We do not know when, where, and how terrorists will attack. It's a phenomenon which is very unpredictable. Therefore, we have to have a common platform of action against terrorism. And in that respect, we as Turkey, and I can say this very forcefully, we as Turkey have actually lost so many lives of our citizens to terrorism. Perhaps we are the country that has lost the most number of people in terrorism. And if we are to terrorism, and if we are going to uh, the fight against terrorism, we should all do it together. Turkey has supported the fight in Afghanistan and uh, Turkey has taken over the over ISAF for a second time in two years and we have 1600 troops in ISAF at the moment in Afghanistan and uh, the Turkish troops are there to fight against terrorism and this, in the same way the PKK Kongrega terror organization in northern Iraq is a terrorist organization and uh, we have repeated and I repeat again our demand that they also be fought against. It is necessary to display a common approach, a common policy, solidarity with regard to dealing with the PKK in northern Iraq. I will also talk about another important point and this was mentioned before, the European Union. There are some concerns with regard to the European Union, but there is no need to uh, have those concerns because the referenda that took place in France and in the Netherlands had nothing to do with Turkey, Turkish membership to the EU. The referendum was, about, was not about whether or not Turkey should become a member of the EU. I think that uh, one should realize that Turkey was used as a domestic policy tool in the referendum, which uh, was not very proper at all. But what was watered on was the European Constitution in the referenda. And so the problem with regard to the voting in these two countries are the problem or is the problem of the two countries themselves and the European Union but I think that the, the European Union has the power to overcome this situation there is only one thing on our agenda as Turkey and uh, that has to do with the fact that uh, the EU extended an invitation to begin negotiations on October the 3rd this year we know the criteria that were that had to be fulfilled to begin the negotiations and we are we are fulfilling them and the negotiations will start on the 3rd of October we have we are working and preparing ourselves for the negotiations our um, we are not dealing with this or that country or this or that leader we are only in this respect dealing with the European Commission and we are carrying out our work with the European Commission and uh, I think that we should understand it well in this context. Another point. Turkey has also been growing through its economy. I am sure that in this room there are many of you who are following Turkey closely from an economic standpoint. Turkey is now a country of stability and stability and confidence. Stability and confidence are very important in an economy. And I will give you only a few parameters to give you an idea. In 2001, the growth rate in Turkey was minus 9.4 percent. In end of 2004, the growth rate in Turkey annually is 9.9 percent. The average of the last three years growth is 8 percent. And this is an indication of the stability that exists. The inflation rate two and a half years ago when we came to power was 34 percent. Right now it's 8 percent. 
Normally, the interest rates, when we came to power, was 70 percent, 7-0. Normally, the interest rates now is 16 percent. Real interest rates are less than 10 percent. That's where we stand. When we came to power, debt to GDP ratio was 78 percent thereabouts. It is now 63.4. So you can see the progress that Turkey has achieved. When we look at our exports, our foreign trade volume end of 2004 is 154 billion U.S. dollars. Two and a half years ago, this figure was around 100, about 100 billion. In tourism, there is an increase in tourism revenues. End of 2004, 17.5 million uh, tourists came to Turkey. This year, we aim at 20 million tourists. There again, there are very positive developments. But of course, this is not enough. We have to keep moving forward, and we will do that. This performance exists, this power strength exists with our government. And this we would like to do together with our friends by developing our relations, by um, investing, mutual, making mutual investments. And I believe that with these steps, Turkey will be able to project its own stability and confidence to other areas. I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here. And uh, I think we will have 15 minutes now for questions, and we can start with that. If that is all right.